the shop this video is going to be about fixing the repair that someone else repaired or something like that this is a sycamore flute sycamore flutes were a modification variation uh, on a simple system flute uh, extended keys to cover holes that your fingers wouldn't be able to reach uh, they're made in the mid 19th century um, you don't find too many nowadays that are actually stamped sycamore anymore there were a lot of makers that made sycamore style flutes um, but finding one that's actually the genuine article they're they're getting harder and harder to come by um, but anyway the tragedy that befell this instrument uh, was it took a hit right on the posts for the thumb key and it knocked those posts loose. So the course of action that someone decided to take was they took the posts and they mounted it on a piece of silver and then screwed the piece of silver into the body. So we've got one, two, three holes in addition. Actually, this isn't a hole. That's the that's a screw that pulled through the the silver, um, and got a couple of pros and cons here. Um, it looks like they kind of ground out the old post holes a little bit to make room for the stubs of the posts. Um, Posts are held in place with globs of lead solder, um, which I'll have to clean up. But the good news is they did not grind off the remaining material from the posts. And that means I can work with these and I don't have to uh, make new posts from scratch, basically. Um, so we're going to go through what we're going to do here. Um, the concept is I'm going to make brass bushings that will accommodate the posts. The posts will screw into those brass bushings and then I'll get them located and oriented properly for the key to function um, and epoxy those bushings in position. And then the posts will still be able to unscrew as needed, but they're going to be on location where they need to be. So to start doing that, first I have to clean up this mess, see what I'm dealing with, see if I have any threads left here, or if I'm going to have to impose my own threads on this, which isn't a big deal, it's just an extra step. Um, then... And I'll have to see if I can do this my hand hand way uh, do this by hand rather than on machine I've done a picture collage of that process but I think I'll do since I have an opportunity I will do a video of that but I'm gonna have to measure some stuff and make sure I've got the tools all in order to do that uh, but I'll be back in a second and we will uh, get going on this repair okay since these posts are soldered in place uh, I'm going to just try to heat them up and see if that does the job oh look at that fell right out. Both of them. That'll make things a lot easier.
under magnification it looks like we have no threads there but that's all right still need to clean up the we've got globs of solder everywhere so I have to wipe away the bulk of that and then see what we're dealing with we might have some threads in there they're just filled up with lead uh, but I'll know more in a sec Torch is almost out of gas here, so we'll see what we can do. Get some more gas is what we do. Okay, no threads. That's just a straight, straight pin, which both makes my job easier on one hand and more difficult on another. Looking at what I've got here, and I will uh, go get the other camera so I can zoom in. Zo GoPro doesn't have any zoom function. So, got the post head and we got the post flange. Um, that post flange will, well, you can probably see it. I haven't cleaned this flute up yet, but all of these posts, you know, there, there's a recess cut so the flange. On this flute, uh, they sink into the body. They're just below the surface of the wood. So that's what I have to take into account. Boring out these holes for the posts. Right now, they're pretty ugly and pretty uh, conical shaped. Uh, so I'm going to have to go in there with a an end mill of some sort and bore down so this is a straight cylinder it has to be smaller than or the same size as this uh, uh, flange hopefully that's cool yeah so fortunately more good news that is almost the right size um, it looks like it's busted out a little bit on one side and that one looks even better better fit uh, what I was concerned about was with these holes being busted out that all of a sudden there would be a big void and that would require me to fill that hole and rebore it from there Right now, at least I have a some semblance of where the hole is located and the angle that it goes in because, you know, we've got a round surface here, so they're not parallel posts. They're kind of doing that, and that has to come down on a, on a round surface right here. Um, so it's, it's not just a straight shot in uh, if you want things to line up when you're done. Um, you know, we could certainly run one in straight and run that one in straight and hope for the best, but uh, usually when I do that it doesn't work out too well and I end up making more work for myself. Okay, um, I have the posts all cleaned up and threaded with a 348 thread. I just did that by hand. Um, silver cuts really easily and my battery was recharging so I couldn't get a picture of it. Um, both of these 
straight posts were not straight from the impact. So I had to, uh, I ran them in a 448 tap first, or a die, rather. Uh, that got things started and straightened things out a little bit. And then I ran the 348 die on, and I think that will work just fine. So now I have to turn down this quarter inch rod. Uh, the flange on these posts is 190. So I will probably turn this down to 180. That gives us uh, room to hide behind the flange of the post and not see a spot of brass sticking out. Turn that down to 180, maybe 175. And then I will have to drill 0785 hole for the tap. So I can run the tap in and have that threaded so the the posts will will go in. Uh, the length of these threads, so I need at least 200 in depth um, for two bushings. Uh, I want a little bit more so I'm going to make this much longer. Um, how much longer will be determined after I measure my parting tool and see how wide that is. Uh, and I'm going to reposition the camera and then make some chips. Whenever you have softer materials, which we work with a lot, brass, silver, nickel, silver, and you have a tool that can handle it, uh, meaning the geometry is such that you can take a deeper cut. Um, if you can, you want to take the deepest cut possible uh, for your tool geometry and the capacity of your machine. Um, that will reduce the amount of deflection because the, the force is going this way. Um, the only time the force is going this way is when you first make contact and if you have a nice rounded nose tool like this one um, it'll make it pretty cylindrical without much deflection. The tap drill for this is a number 47. Uh, even though it is true that a uh, drill will find center on a spinning face. Uh, it helps to have a start spot for your drill to start. So while it is true that a drill will find center on a spin a rotating face that's only true until it starts to cut so if your drill is walking around and walking around and walking around and then it bites your hole is going to be off center um, you have to consider the tip geometry of the drill and all that good stuff but that's why you put in a, a center spot Should be plenty deep enough. A little um, power tapping trick you can do on a lathe. Um, I'm just going to run this in. I'm going to start this going slow. I'm going to run this in and just till it makes contact and my tailstock is loose. It's not loose loose but it's, it can slide if it's going to get pulled. So um, you just have to be careful of your speed, listen to what the screeches and squeals are telling you, and be ready to hit stop. 
which may be before you get to the desired depth you need. And there it's just drawing it right in. And that's where we stop, where it starts to squeak, because we don't want a broken tap. And now I can, I don't have a reverse on this little lathe, so I disengage my, um, disengage my chuck from the tailstock and just manually outfeed it. And hopefully, I picked the right tap out of the box. And there's the start of our bushing for making these posts secure again. Now I will do some, uh, I'm going to put some grooves in here for the epoxy to grab onto, and I'm going to part them off to the proper length. But I'm going to get the camera out of my way first so I don't bump into it. Okay, so here are the finished bushings. And you might not be able to tell from the angle that I have things at, but this one, it doesn't thread all the way on. Um, part of that is because uh, I may not have cleaned up all of the lead that was globbed on there underneath the shoulder uh, could be and that could have caused the die not to have threaded all the way up uh, easiest way to fix that take this out a little bit here now I don't want to go in after this area underneath the shoulder and risk messing up the threads that are already there so the top of the threaded area, we have ample threads on both sides to make a grip. We only need yeah, two, maybe three um, full threads to get a good um, mechanical join. So I'm going to take a countersinking bit, uh, one that's got a smaller point on it, and basically just chamfer out the top of that brass piece and that will allow this enlarged uh, area here that doesn't have good threads uh, to go in farther. Um, I made the bushings 30 thousandths longer than the length of the threads so uh, there, there's lots of room there it's not going to come sticking out the bottom and you will notice I've got grooves for epoxy to grab onto when I have them in place and now we're on to making the holes in the instrument the lowest stress part of the job.